Okay, I need two volunteers. Preferably a boy and a girl. Billy, because it's your birthday, that's easy. And let's go with Joseph Martinez. Come on, Joseph. This actually isn't Joseph Martinez, if you guys were confused. It's Carson. Okay. But Joseph Martinez played soccer for Atlanta United, and he is a baller, and they won this game. Okay. How many, uh, I need you guys to break up into your small groups. Six great boys, let's do it! Six great boys. What's up? What you need? Yeah, no, you go with the six great boys. If you're a fifth grader, go with the six great boys. Yeah, you should do it. You're on stage. Here you guys need a hula hoop. What grade are you guys? What grade are you guys? Fourth? Right there, just be sad. Jaden, what grade are you in? Where's the fourth grade girls at? Look right there with Mr. Nason, Dave. You're in fifth? We're going to sixth graders over there. Here you guys are in a hula hoop. You need a hula hoop. Ah! And you need a hula hoop. Oh, it's going to be tough for your group. Good luck, Jalessa. Good luck. Okay, everyone has to have a hand on the hula hoop. Everyone in the group. Every single person in the group has to have a hand on the hula hoop. All right. Okay. Who has heard of the game? Who's heard of an Atari first of all? Oh, yes, yes. There's a video. Oh, okay, we have a video, okay. There's a, a game called Asteroids. Watch this video. This is Asteroids. This is a really fun game. Watch, watch these Asteroids break up into smaller pieces. Nice. Ooh. 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 I mean, Asteroids you blow up your points. And then if you're an Asteroid hit your ship, you blow up. And the UFO will shoot at you too. Ooh, just put that. Oh! Got him. Ooh, ooh, that was close. This is Corey playing back when he was in fifth grade. Okay, that's good. Alright, here we go. So, the object is you guys are the asteroids. You can move around, but you have to stay. You can't go past the uh, circle of chairs back there. No, why not? Because it's too far. Alright, you guys are the ship. You have a bucket of rockets here. Billy, come get the bucket of rockets. You guys have to blow up the asteroids. Demonstration, Mr. Corey, watch. Watch how to shoot the rocket. Ooh, that was pretty good. You got it? You know how to shoot them? Alright, you guys can move around. Now, listen, this is very important, asteroids. That was a good one. This is very important, asteroids. If you're not listening, you're going to lose the game. Your hand has to be on the hula hoop the whole time. Just one hand. If if a rocket hits any part of your asteroid, which is you, people, then you're out. You blow up. If a asteroid, if a rocket goes through the hula hoop, you also blow up. No, the whole team. Sit down where you're at. All right, you can go back to your seats. Ah. All right, you got it. You guys might want to get out of that corner. You start. You're in you're in bad starting position. All right, come on. All right, you have 60 seconds. Are you ready, Rocketeers? Don't get close to them. All right, that's a good group, Zeb. That's a good group. They have small, the small team here to protect the face. All right, 60 seconds to destroy the Rocketeers. Are you guys ready? Here we go. In three, two, one.
Congratulations to Boy Big Boys. Boy Big Boys? Boy Big Boys. Good job. Those guys are good. Cool. Alright, pick up the rockets. Grab a seat. I know how to shoot it. Watch it. Because Kanye is coming to bring the message here. Ow! Good job, Ryan and Shooters. That was pretty awesome. What are you about these in bulk at? This is nice. A Walmart intro here? Do you know? Thanks, Carson. That was fun. Alright. You ready, team? Alright. Get on the table. Are you sure? Alright, I'm going to pray for Tanya, and then she's going to bring the message today. It's all about summer and fun. And other stuff. Yeah. Stop. Okay. Yay. All right. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for today, God. Thank you for these kids, God, and their hearts. Uh, God, I just ask that you um, speak through Tanya today as she brings the message, and that these kids hear it, that they apply it uh, this summer and in their lives, God. Um, thank you for your word, your son. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wow, I am so impressed to see so many of y'all here this morning. It's been a little slack in the numbers the past couple of weeks. People going like on vacation and stuff. Whatever that is, I'm really <laughs> Corey, is there any way we can take these on camp kid jam? Can we take these? Seriously? This would make the game of tag so much more fun. I'm good at you. Yeah. Uh, you know where it's a lobby? I should have been Right? I mean, in between, we can definitely use those for the tag, for the game of tag. So, good morning, 456. How's everybody doing? Good. Yeah, is everybody excited about summer? Yes. 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 So who is not excited about summer? What? You fun killers. Why are you not excited about summer? Oh, I know. Yeah, that is my thing. We miss our school whenever I'm not there. We do not miss our school. Well, some people do, especially, I think it's a good issue between girls and boys. The girls will miss school because they miss their friends and their teachers and instructors and stuff like that. And boys are like, forget about it. I'm sleeping late. I'm not going to take a shower for a whole week. That's so, um, there's been something that I've been excited about this week. So, it has literally made me smile all week long. My cheeks start hurting. I just really wake up giddy. And that one thing is, that is summer. I absolutely love summer. Summer is my favorite time of the year. You've got people who love fall because they love the colors. You can keep that. A lot of people like winter because then you have fires and snores and stuff like that. You can keep that. But the summertime, that is my time. Um, I get really excited about it because what's one of the things that we think about when summer comes around? Ooh, what is it? No school! Yeah, no school, but what is one of the activities that we like to do? Swim. 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 Okay, so Swim. for summer, summer to me is just one of those times that I really get a chance to just kick back. My kids get out of school. We don't have that crazy schedule of, you know, cheer and lacrosse, and we've got, we have extra time to just lay back and enjoy ourselves. So summer for me means relaxing by the pool. Right? And so when we were back by the pool, we kind of just hanging out, chilling, we've got good friends that come over. We have um, awesome popsicles that we love to enjoy. It gets really, really hot. What's your favorite flavor? Great. 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 Yeah. Not the classic cherry. I love to just float around the pool, have myself a cherry popsicle, just chilling and have a good time with my friends. So I love the pool. I love barbecuing. I love good hot dogs and hamburgers off the grill. Really? Having friends over, having the popsicles. Those are all things that I love. I love being outside. Um, in the winter, you don't have a chance to be outside and play sports as much. But when spring and summer comes, the best thing to do is to be outside playing frisbee, playing tennis, a little bit of football, whatever that is. And so I love a lot of things about summer. So. What is it that you love? So these are things that I love that I've exp expressed to you. What are some things that you love? So what I'm gonna do is ask you to break off into a small group, break off into your small groups by grade, and discuss some of the things that make you happy and that you love. And then we're gonna come back together and see what those things are. So go ahead and I'll give you a couple minutes. Uh, Whenever you're ready, Anna, right? 
Y'all better have a doozy. Take us time. Hey, all right, so okay. I express to you hey, all the things that I love. I'm using the word love because mm -hmm. I love sometimes. I love the pools. I love tacos. I love popsicles. These are all the things that Stone makes me so happy about. So you had a chance oh, to talk about things that you love, and I would like to hear what some of those things were. So if you would raise your hand and you give me some examples of the things that you absolutely love, Gracie. Reading during the summer. Okay, is there a certain spot outside that you love to read? Um, I really, I really read outside. I just read in my bed. Uh huh. Okay. Swimming. Swimming, of course. Okay. Alright. Yeah, you. Beach. Oh, I love the beach. That's where I'd rather be instead of a pool. But since we're landlocked, the pool will work, right? I was talking about beach. All right, what else? Oh, postcards. Let's put travel and postcards. That's good. That's exciting. That's good if somebody still does that. How about you, honey? Woo! Yes, watermelon. Oh, we got a round of applause on that. I like that. All right, you, honey. Right? 
but we still love those people. So loving people can be hard, it can be confusing, um, because they say things and then they don't do it. And those are the same things that we do. Have you, raise your hand if you've ever let anybody down. I mean, all of us can be honest and say that we did. All of us can say that we were going to do something. Whether, yeah, mom, yeah, mom, I'm going to clean my room before I go to bed. And then she walks in the next morning, and stuff is just everywhere. There's your pool towel, your bathing suit still wet on the floor. And you let your mom down. You said it's something that you were going to do, and you didn't do it, right? And so with her, she's going to love you no matter what. But as we're growing up and we're learning about love, and we're learning how to love people when they let us down, or when times are hard, then that gets a little bit confusing. So we have some questions about love that may come up, like how do you, you have this anger with someone or someone's let you down, how do you get past that point and you still love it? How can you still put your hand out and say, hold my hand? How can you say, come over here, I'll fix you a sandwich to your sibling who let you down? How do we do that? And so we've got these questions, and y'all have been here long enough, even the new ones here from fourth grade and from fourth grade, you should know if you've been in Sub Hills for long enough, where do we find answers? In the Bible. Yes. Okay, that book has all the answers for us. And it's the, and it's the book that we actually can turn to even when it comes to love. Because love is a crazy, crazy, strange thing. And it's crazy and strange at all ages. Your age, my age, your grandfather's age. It's a crazy, confusing thing. So, long ago, there was a man named Saul who you may know as Paul. Does anybody know that story? Mm -hmm. Does anybody yes. remember that? Mm -hmm. So his name changed, and it was because why? God. Yeah, so what happened with him? He saw a light. Yeah, so there was a change in him, and it was so drastic that he was given another name. So Saul turned to Paul, and how that happened was, Saul was a man who was after anybody who believed that Jesus was the Son of God. He didn't believe that, and he thought these people were crazy, and he was out of them, and he sought them out and tried to destroy these people who believed that Jesus was the Son of God. But then there was this one day, he had a lot of hate, and God didn't like that. God wanted him to know what love was, and God wanted him to start feeling love and seeing love. So on a really dusty road on the way to Damascus, an event happened, and this event changed his life forever. He now believed that Jesus was the Son of God. And he went out and started churches. He started loving people. He started teaching people about Jesus. And he started teaching people how to love like Jesus. He started these churches. And so as he had these churches that were popping up, he was sending letters to these churches. And these letters <coughs> would give them pointers on how to treat people, how to love people. It was guidance. It was advice. He was trying to teach them how to live in a world and love like the way Jesus did with people who li lived nothing like Jesus. And so he, was, he sent a letter to the town of Corinth. Does anybody know what this letter would be? Does anybody know the book that yeah. comes from this? The book in the Bible? Corinthians? Got it, Tyler. Yes. What is it? All right, so we have a verse. Do you have that verse up here? Let's see. I can't see that one. Can someone read that for me? Patient. 
Having patience is an action, right? Mm -hmm. Whenever your little brother is so hyper because he has six pop signals and he's acting a fool and driving you crazy and you gotta practice patience, right? So love is kind. And then kind is like you can't see kind until it becomes an action. It's just a word. And so when you show acts of kindness, then that's an act. So these are all things that are acted out. So we're gonna go over some scenarios here that will show you what love is not and what love is. And it'll show you in actions. So in our first scenario, let me get my stuff together here. All right, so you're at the pool, your favorite place to be, right? Your favorite place to be is at the pool. You're swimming, you're hanging out. All your friends are there, all your peeps are there. You got family, you got some aunts and uncles over there, and you are killing it. You're the center of attention. You're running right across there in your cannonball, and the way you come in at that angle, you don't leave a single dry person around the pool. Maybe even get your neighbors wet on the other side. Such a big cannonball. Jeremy, I think you can do it. Yep, and wet your neighbors next door. You got it? Okay, so you're out there and you are just having the time of your life. Everybody's laughing at you. You're the center of attention. Here you go, you're doing these cannonballs, and guess what? Here comes your friend. They jump in the pool. They get on a floaty. Yeah. And they're like, they're doing all these balancing acts on the floaty. And guess what? People aren't really looking at you anymore. They're like laughing at your friend. And you're like, hey, hey, look at this, watch this. And you go in for another cannonball. And they're still watching all the balancing acts. Like this little gymnast over here on the floaty. Yeah, just really acting out. And they're clapping for them. Go ahead and give them a round of applause. Woo! I mean, really showing out. And so while you're there and you're like, nobody's watching me, you start having this feeling inside of you. And you're looking up at your friend and you're like, this is a little over the top, okay? This is a little bit, I'm just, I don't know. That love you had for your friend just really doesn't seem like love anymore, huh? Um, I need y'all to look at me, not now. Uh, that feeling that I have inside my belly, would be like envy or jealousy, right? Why is everybody looking at him? I'm so mad. I cannot believe. <laughs> it's actually that funny. It's really not that funny. <laughs> I need y'all to pay attention to me. Stop looking at him. Look at me. Look at me. <sighs> so where's the love in this situation, right? Because we need to ask. Here I am getting a little bit jealous. Because my friend can do these whatever. <laughs> so anyway, we'll, we'll move on. We'll think about where the love is or was. I'm not sure anymore. So um, anyway, later on, you kind of get over that. Your friend gets out of the pool. You do another cannonball. And a few people look at you and smile, but you don't really get that captive audience that you had before. Woo. Now the pop signals get pulled out. What? You jump out the pool and your mom comes out and she's got the box. Not just a couple of them, but she's got a whole box of popsicles. And you were so excited. Popsicles are your jam, man. Cherry, grape, lime. It don't matter which one it is. Those are your favorite things. All your friends in this room know that popsicles are your favorite. Your mom knows popsicles are your favorite, right? And so then you turn around like this. And you're adjusting the speaker, you're trying to change the song on the Bluetooth outside by the pool. Where's the box in this? He's eating it. Where's... He's eating all of them. Yeah. Okay, that's just me. That's... Wait, okay. hey, you're only one person. Like... That's equal. You know those are my favorite. Yeah, Did my mom not tell you those are my favorite? Hey, uh, you got your brownie right. lips on all of them. You can't even share now. Brain yeah, brain I hope brain. you get a brain yeah, freeze. Yeah. I hope that brain freeze lasts all day. That's what you deserve. <laughs> I cannot believe you ate all the popsicles when you know they're my favorite. Can I have some? <laughs> you, you want to? Yeah, I hope that you get a brain freeze while you sleep. You have to ask. Oh, yeah. He could have yeah, offered. He knew those were my favorite. 
Can I have one? Here, can I have one? Anyway. <laughs> so let's move on. I'm going to get over that, and I'm just going to keep crossing my fingers that he'll get a brain for his body's sleep. I just, I can't even believe that he would do that to me. So, you move on. The party's still going on. All your friends are still there. Kind of put a little damper with your attitude here, the jealousy and the anger for the popsicles and... You know, so as you're moving along, you're about to get in the pool. You're looking around for your goggles, and uh, these are your these are the perfect goggles. Your grandmother bought these at a special store. They measured your head to make sure that these goggles would fit you. Okay, they're your special special goggles. You're looking for them. You're looking for them. Where are my goggles? Where are my goggles? And you have to look over. <laughs> Those are my goggles, dude. Those are made for me. Those, no, look, those are, don't put that on your fat head. It's not made for your, <laughs> I cannot believe you just broke my goggles. My grandmother bought those for me. <laughs> Who invited him to the party anyway? <laughs> what kind of friend are you? Give me my goggles back. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so after this, you just lost it. You literally lost your Jesus. Throw all the toys out of the yard. Just throw them into the neighbor's yard. Take the goggles and you throw those over too. I rip the box up and you take them to your friends. You here, eat this. You ate all my pops. It was you can eat the cardboard. <laughs> so I took my pork and beans fork and jumped in that pool and I deflated those floatables. Just. Oh! Okay, that's just evil. <laughs> you had to push so bad. He took my. He took my. My audience. Ate my popsicles and then he broke my goggles. And all my other friends were there. They saw it happen. They're still talking to him. They're still going to be friends with him. So, what does this mean? Where's the love in that? Yeah. So, what if after you've lost your Jesus in front of your friends and you've acted like a crazy fool, probably spit coming out of your mouth or yelling so much, right? Who's ever been that mad? Just blah, 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 just. Crazy. You can't even well, get the words out of your mouth, right? Sometimes you say the wrong words, you call people the wrong name, and all that kind of stuff. So you stop yourself right before you do something you regret, and you sit down. And you're still steaming, you're shaking, you're so bad, you cannot believe it's the beginning of the summer. He's already broke your goggles. So, all of a sudden you turn around and you realize that your friends walk to the corner store and they bought another box of popsicles. <coughs> they're ready to share with you. And even that friend who had taken five, the last five, oh, is now offering you your favorite color, right? Because he feels sorry for that. And he loves you. He doesn't want you to be upset with him. So your other friend goes over to the neighbor's yard and picks up all the tools you crazily or toys you threw over there like a maniac and put them back in the pool so that when it's time to get back in the pool, that's a great way to show love, right? How many of y'all actually offered that kind of love to one of your friends? How about your siblings? It's a little harder to do it for your siblings, isn't it? For some reason, it's a little harder to offer that kind of grace and love and mercy for the people that we actually live with, as opposed to our friends. What if uh, the goggles were actually broke? You just overreacted. The little thing just pop off. Your grandmother takes it while you're foaming that mouth. And she puts it back together. And guess what? Your goggles are okay. Are my goggles okay, man? Uh, See, look at that. We can be friends again. Yeah. I really appreciate it. So, loving others is not always easy. Can we all agree with that? How many of y'all have been mad for a really long time at one person? Mm -hmm. Right? Loving others is very, very hard. It's not easy. It takes work. Does, do y'all know the word intentional? Do you know what the word intentional means? Yeah. Uh -huh. So like you intentional. On purpose. Yeah, on purpose. You have to do it. It's an action. And so to love others, we have to be intentional. We have to intentionally swallow our pride sometimes, walk beside them when they're acting crazy, like I did at the pool. Not proud of my shiny moment that day. But I've got a little of the summer and make up for it, right? I've got great friends who love me. 
They went and got some popsicles. They went and got my toys out of the neighbor's yard. They still hung out with me until the little lights came out, flying around. We went out there and catching the lightning bugs. And they were there with me. They were showing love, even though I didn't deserve that kind of love, right? I didn't really do anything to, to deserve that. I didn't earn it. But they gave it to me because they loved me. And that's a true kind of love. So, in that, can you put the verse back up? The Corinthians? So, love is patient. Who practiced patience in that situation? Um, My friends did. I was the one that was acting crazy. You had patience with your friends. Yeah, I had to have patience with my friend. I could have drop kicked them. I didn't. I practiced patience, right? All right, so patient. Love is patient and kind. So who was a kind person in that situation? Your friends. What did they do that was kind? They went and bought more popsicles. Seriously, that's a lot of kindness, and that's an action. They didn't just say they loved me. They didn't just say that they were kind people. They put it into action, right? So, does love, let's go to the next part. What's that part where it says it does not easily become angry? angry. Oh, I kind of messed that one up, didn't I? I got angry on that first thing. <laughs> Just a little. I mean, when you steal my thunder and people are like really paying me some attention and I'm cannonballing and, and you just come in there and you just, you just take over the show, I shouldn't have got angry that fast, should I? Had a little patience. I was not the one showing up. My friends were. Now, my one friend that was literally taking over the show and eating my popsicles and broke my goggles, I was then needing to practice love and patience for that friend, correct? Yes. But I showed anger yes. and no patience whatsoever. So, how do we how do we learn how to practice this kind of love? What do, where do we find where do we find that kind of love? How do we learn about it? Where do we go to find out about this kind of love? The Bible. The Bible. And so, this verse is a great way to learn what God says about love. Who, in your opinion, is the one person that came to this earth and practiced perfect love? Jesus. 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 That's correct. He was our example. He had perfect love when he came here, and we can model ourselves after Jesus. That's a perfect kind of love. He had the patience, the kindness, all those fruits. And so that's what we're going to be studying for this whole summer. Our entire church will be studying the fruit of the Spirit. Does anybody, can anybody stand up and repeat all those fruits? Is anybody wrong? Strawberry. Anybody? Strawberry, blackberry. No, the fruit of the spirit. So apple. Peace, patience. Who knows all that? Did y'all remember that in all stars? Kind. Love, yep. joy, peace, patience, kindness. Self-control. Self-control. There you go. There you go. There's all of them. So that's what we're going to be studying this whole summer is the fruit of the spirit. And love is the first one that's mentioned as the fruit of the spirit. So we have... The Holy Spirit living inside of us as well. And with that Holy Spirit, we carry those fruit in us. We just have to make sure that we take time to be with God in prayer. That we take the time to be in the Word. And then we start putting those things into practice. Those fruit. That fruit. Peace, patience, love, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. I'm getting it. I'm going to learn it right with you all this summer. So we will be practicing all those this summer. So how can you love others like God does? So when it comes to your family, your friends, even your enemies, which was my friend who was that enemy that day, how can you show them the sort of love that Paul talked about? If you're having trouble thinking of ideals, don't worry. You'll come up with all sorts of ideals during small group. Before you head there, let's pray and thank God for loving us in a way that we have to be very intentional to love others. So I'm going to pray real quick, and then Mr. Liss is going to come up here and do worship for us, and then we'll break off the small groups. All right. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning with everybody in this room so that we can uh, talk about the one thing that I just, I'm so truly appreciative that you give us, and that's love, Lord. And you love us in a way that we just don't understand. It's, it just surpasses everything that we understand. 
You love us no matter how we act, no matter what we say, no matter what we do. Day in, day out, your love remains. And Lord, I pray that we work every single day to practice that kind of love for ourselves and for all those around us. We know that it will be work, and we know we need to lean in on you. And we need to watch, um, think about the way that Jesus loved people while he was here. And we need to think about the ways that you love us. And then we can mirror those, those uh, images and those actions. And Lord, we want you to know that we love you every single day. We're so thankful for all that you give us. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.